you know, the one advantage of having the worst record in the NFL is that we do get priority number one on the wi waiver wire. Wow, tongue twister. Um, so anytime a player is released by any of the other 31 teams, we get the number one priority, basically. If we want him, we can get him. So they released him from the Titans, but he was drafted by the Rams' fourth-round pick in the 2017 draft. So he already knows um, Brad Holmes pretty well and, of course, Jared Goff. So that being said, guys, should they go ahead and sign Josh Reynolds. Yeah, definitely. Claim him. Uh, and th my reasoning for this, um, it it's not, has nothing to do with about, you know, is Josh Reynolds an, a wide receiver one or two? No. But as of right now, and looking at the wide receiver core we have, he's an upgrade. And, uh, you know, it, it's a great chance for Brad Holmes to reunite with him. Uh, he was obviously, he had a big part of taking him when he was with the Rams. And, you know, he's, we're first on the waiver wire. And number two, Jared Goff has rapport with him. I mean, he, he what do you have, 637 yards. He had 600 and something yards in 2020 with the Rams with Jared Goff, Jared Goff as his quarterback. So I, the guy can put up production. It didn't work out um, in Tennessee. But, you know, the guy's not going to have a Sean McVay in Detroit. He's going to have Anthony Lynn calling plays. But at the same time, I think Josh Reynolds is an upgrade over, over anybody we have right now. I'm on Ross St. Brown I like, but... I mean, I, Josh Reynolds is better than Cleef Raymond, so you, you put Josh Reynolds in there and see what he can do. So absolutely they should claim him. Um, in, in terms of Iffy, I want to talk about that real quick. I'm excited to see him play again because if you look at his game, strictly isolate his game against the Packers when he injured his, his quad, had a pass deflection. I mean, yeah, we got blown out, but he played hard, and that's a corner I, I'm excited to watch play. But going back to Josh Reynolds, um, if he exceeds expectations this season, you, you claim him, you sign him. That that's the that's the beauty of it. You know, I don't think Josh Reynolds is gonna make the deciding factor between zero wins or or two wins, but it, it will help your wide receiver core for now for the future. And uh, he's just a piece, so of course it ain't gonna hurt the Lions. I think it's it's a great idea. What about you, Adam? Well, look, the Josh Reynolds things make sense. I don't mind it as much. I think it's a good move, um, especially you know you have rapport already with Jared Goff. I don't think it it's any much of a difference. I think the best thing. Or the best news to come out of this whole topic is uh, Iffy yes. is going to yes. be back. Cornerback, young. When he was playing, he looked good. He looked solid, showed promise. So whether or not he plays against Pittsburgh, I think maybe that's too soon. But for sure against Cleveland, I'd imagine Definitely. he'd be suiting up. So you just you just got to roll with the punches. You know it's a rebuild year. You don't need to rush anybody back. You just want to see what you got in your young players. That way you can make the decision in the next year, two, three years. All right, these are the guys we're taking with us moving forward, and these are the guys that we're likely to move on from after. I think it's pretty straightforward. I don't see any problem with it. If they want to go after Josh Reynolds, again, it's not a game changer. No. It's not a guy it's that's going to turn piece. you a two, three win differential, but go ahead, Kennedy. Um, no, I was just going to say, I do think he's a good piece. I mean, it would be uh, $500,000 for the rest of the season. Um, and then when he was with Jared Goff over four years, he recorded 113 receptions, 1,450 yards, so an average of 12.5 yards per reception and nine touchdowns. So w we know this wide receiving core could use a little something at least, and it doesn't cost much in the grand scheme of football contracts. Look, <laughs> it doesn't. The free agent class, let's be honest, it's, it's really good this year. But also, reality check, you're probably not going to make moves for free agency. You just don't have the cap space. Still dealing with dead cap from Matthew Stafford. Now you're dealing with Jared Goff. You restructured so you could send your rookies. There's a lot of maneuvering Brad Holmes is going to have to do in the offseason. He's not going to be spending big in free agency. We already know this. Heavy load and heavy focus on the draft class. Plain and simple. And that's your option. And, that, and that's really it. I'm, I'm not sure where else to go with this, to be honest. The Lions are in a position... Where they are three years out from being a 9-10 to 10 win football team. They just are. The Cleveland Brown model. They went offensive line. Great. Cool. If the O-line's healthy, that looks good. They have two backs. Okay, good. They have a bridge quarterback. Sure. But you got to draft a quarterback still. Yeah. Which can be done this year or the next year. And then you got to figure out wide receiver position. Is that going to happen in the second, third round of the drafts? Are you going to reach in the first round? Try and land yourself a Justin Jefferson. Who knows? And then you got to fix the secondary. And yep. is Akuda going to come back? Is he going to be a valuable piece to this defense? Or is he just a number two, number three corner on the team? 
You hope he's a one, but that's kind of his ceiling right now, maybe? You don't know. He's been injured, and when he's played, he's looked not good. So that's not promising. You need safeties. Are you going to re-sign your safeties to a big deal? I'm not sure. Maybe. What can you afford? Is he going to take big money elsewhere? You're not a winning team yet. You're not going to be one this year, and you're definitely not going to be one next year. Mm -hmm. So for the next two seasons, while you have Jared Bum Goff as your quarterback, you're going to lose a ton of football games. And then by year three, Dan Campbell hopefully has really taken that next step as a head coach and really is starting to find his groove and has an identity and has his team playing the way he wants them to play. And of course, Brad Holmes supports him with player personnel. And if you have that, well, there's no reason why you can't expect 9, 10, 11 wins in year three. That's all it should take to turn it around, no matter how bad your situation is, if you just do the right things. And if you aren't doing the right things, well, what the hell are you doing? You're paid millions of dollars to make the right decisions. You're not, made, you're not paid millions of dollars as a GM, as a head coach to, oh, well, you know, I get it right every once in a while. No, no. You are in charge of this franchise and you are in charge of this rebuild. And I always use the Chargers example to have three to four draft years that sound just like this. James Darwin, Joey Bosa, your franchise quarterback and Justin Herbert, and then you follow it up with Rashawn Slater, one of the best tackles in football right now, and Asante Samuel in the second round. You need a three-year period like that. And if you don't have it, well, how do you ever expect to really win games consistently? You're always going to be SOL if you win nine, ten games in two years from now, and then you go another four years winning six. That is not progress. Striking lottery, winning eight games out of the nine you win on fourth quarter comebacks isn't sustainable. You've never had a sustainable product. So hopefully, this new regime puts it back out there. And if not, you're back to square one again. And what more do I have to say to you? Anybody? Jeff? Kennedy? Fish? Somebody help me. What well, more can I say? I mean, what more can any, I mean anybody really say at this point? Like, you're, you're, I mean, you're 100% right. It comes down to the, the fact that the Lions are at least two to three years away from making any noise at all because there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And it starts, I think the Lions' number one priority right now should be retaining their already good players, like Tracy Walkers of the world. Or, or that's, that's your number one priority, adding talent and, and keeping talent. So, like the Cleveland Browns did. So, that was a good, that's a pretty good comparison. Look, if you have the number one overall pick and you're not confident... Get assets. And, and somebody offers you three first-round picks and a second and a third... You trade back to five or six or seven, whatever it may be, and you settle for one of the better defensive players coming out of the draft. And then in the later first round pick, whether it's 24, 32, doesn't matter. You're going to probably take a wide receiver or you're going to take a secondary player. Or you're going to take another defensive lineman. I'm not sure where you're going right now, but you need a lot of pieces. You're thin. Trey Flowers, you don't want him back. Useless. Useless player. You need to draft another corner. You need to draft a safety. You Kyle need to, Hamilton, woo! Yeah, I don't think he'll be available that that late if you trade back, and you're definitely not taking him number one. So I don't think that's happening. I am. I would. Yeah, thank God, you're not the GM. <laughs> um, 